Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today I'm doing another one of my pop-up chibi paper craft videos. It's going to be a celebration of Inktober. And uh, somewhat unusually, I'm going to begin by making this single brush stroke. I'm using a kind of deliberately dried out old brush, trying to get a slightly, you know, something that looks a little bit like calligraphy. Let me go ahead and jump in uh, and try to do this. Now if I were a calligraphy master, I could do it in a single stroke. I am definitely not. <laughs> a master of calligraphy, so I'm going to probably do it in a few different strokes to try to get the look that I'm going for here. I think we're almost there. Not bad. I think that'll be usable. Uh, now allow me to uh, flip this page around because the actual uh, chibi character is going to be drawn up here, and I'm going to go and get into doing that right now. Okay, so you can see I kind of cleaned it up a little in this area, going right up to this line that I had drawn. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to do now is begin to draw this character. Now my idea is to make it look like he himself is uh, the one who's making this brush stroke. So I'm actually going to start down here with maybe uh, what will look like, I hope, the uh, end of his brush. Maybe give a little bend to it so that uh, the illusion is there of this brush being the thing that made this stroke. And I'm going to actually go back and do the, uh, the angle of the brush itself before I do anything else. Hang on, I think the lighting needs to be fixed a little here. Yeah, that should be better. It's getting a little bit of a glare off of the page. But uh, let's go ahead and get this line in here that is going to be uh, for the brush. And uh, I can maybe do more details on this later, but for now I'm making it, the, the whole thing is going to be fairly cartoony. It is a chibi uh, character after all. Uh, so I'm making a sort of proportionally very short looking brush here. And now the goal is to make it look like he's holding uh, the brush in both of his hands. I imagine this one up here, his, is that his right hand? His left hand? Do I know my right from my left? That is the question. We will figure it out by the end of the video. But I'm going ahead and putting in, and then I wanted to get a very sort of uh, bold stance here, like uh, he's uh, leaning into this brush stroke. Like the real artist that he is. And so I'm going to go ahead and get that, uh, that sort of pose in there to begin with. This will be the, eventually be the upper body. People uh, often like to know what uh, size I'm working at, and I didn't really prepare uh, that. Maybe later on I can show you the, uh, the actual measurements. Once I'm done, let's do it that way. Once I'm done with this work, I will um, take a ruler and measure it, and then you'll know if you want to try to do a similar such project at home, you'll know what size I was working at. So there, you can see I started with the legs, or uh, basically to get that the the pose in place, and now I can move on. Uh, some people might think, boy, I usually start with the head. Uh, this whole thing had to start with the brush, just because uh, you know the brush uh, leads to the brush stroke, and uh, sometimes you you know you you start with what the project demands instead of always starting with the head or whatever. Um, I'm like anyone else; I tend I tend to start drawing the head of the character before anything else. Uh, ordinarily. Make sure that this does not go completely out of frame. Come on, Krilly. <laughs> Pay attention. And uh, so now it's time to get his facial expression. I figure he's going to be... Um, I always like when the person has maybe like the tongue sticking out like they're concentrating. <laughs> like they can't concentrate unless the th tongue is sticking out. And I think maybe just a little bit of a... Um, the eyebrows coming down to show concentration. How does that work? This is actually not going to look so much like a classic chibi. Some people might say, that's not a chibi. That's no chibi. I know chibi and you, sir, are no chibi. Um, this is uh, maybe going to be a little more of a classic cartoony character. I guess I'll decide by the time I'm done. Kind of winging it, folks, let's be honest, this time. I wanted to get some spontaneity into this illustration and sort of uh, figure it out as we go. Now, one thing I'm trying to be aware of is the fact that I need to cut around this with scissors. 
uh, this shape. So I'm going to try to not make uh, too many tricky things to cut around here by making his hair really fancy or whatever. And this other uh, hand is not going to be seen so much. Maybe just get a hint of a thumb over here to suggest that this extra hand. Uh, brushes tend to have a sort of a metal part at the tip, right? Right? I'm not just making this stuff up, am I? And uh, this whole part, I figure, is going to be maybe brown uh, for the um, hairs of the brush, but then uh, some black down here that will uh, connect with the inking that we did before. And, uh, yeah, we're coming along, I suppose, adding just a little bit. I feel like the angle of his, uh, if I redrew the angle of his arm, it might uh, add to the, yeah, really throwing his shoulder into it. Might improve the pose a little bit. And I think the next thing to do, as, as I do so often, is to add color. Um, now, I was thinking about just doing it all black and white and using 100% ink for this illustration. Uh, you know, India ink, ink out of the bottle ink. But I thought I've done a lot of black and white uh, illustrations lately for these videos. I felt like this one would benefit from having the contrast of uh, the character having some color uh, versus the ink in the illustration being black. So I'm going to actually go grab some markers and we're going to add some color to this illustration. Alright, so I guess I'll begin with the uh, adding some uh, marker to the brush here. I thought if I if I leave a little band of white it could look like it has a certain shininess to it. little trick for you, anytime you want something to look shiny, just leave a little band of white. And hopefully you'll get a bit of that effect there. I want to use a slightly different shade of brown for the uh, bristles of the brush. Tiny bit lighter. As I said, eventually we get ink down here. And I think that um, Markers should qualify as ink, right? It's all ink for Inktober. <laughs> I'm not cheating, am I? So I've decided to give, uh, I'm going to go for my classic combination of blue and uh, kind of warm ochre yellow. One of my favorite color combinations. Do I really need to do this all real time? <laughs> Will everyone fall asleep as they watch this video? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Tune in, folks. Um, as Mark really wastes time adding ink to an illustration. Anyway, you guys know the drill. I'm going to continue doing this, and I, I think maybe it is time to bring in old man Inktober time lats. <laughs> Finally! Man, you got to use me more often, dude. And I'm going to finish coloring in everything with the markers, and then we'll be back to do a bit of real inking. All right, so we've got enough of the colors in place. I'm bringing in the old dip pen. I thought, boy, Inktober would not be complete without going back to the old-fashioned way of doing things. And uh, this time, because I've got the uh, paper, I've never had this piece of paper taped down this time, happily. Uh, I can feel free to rotate the page, which is definitely something I feel I need to do to get a natural... Uh, loose stroke. Some people like the sound of this pen scratching across the paper. Other people, not a big fan. Can you hear it? My apologies if you are among those who it's like uh, nails on a chalkboard. As you can see, I'm not so used to it. I feel more comfortable with my uh, 
micron pig, pigma, pigma micron. I've just, I'm so used to that one uh, that this one does not come completely naturally to me. But you can see me sort of relaxing into it as I go. As I so often say, um, the key to smooth ink strokes, in my experience, is the speed with which you lay them onto the page, and that is, uh, you know, naturally related to your comfort level with the drawing tool. So, you know, if I were determined, let's say I had the plan to do an entire book using just this uh, dip pen approach, well, you can be sure that I would spend weeks, if not months, um, practicing to get used to it, to become comfortable enough with it, uh, which maybe has some people asking, well, Mark, why didn't you spend weeks and months practicing before you used it for this video? We're watching you practice. What gives, dude? Well, yes, I suppose you are watching me practice. I hope you don't mind. And uh, just a little uh, word, because some people may, may be wondering, hey, Mark, are you doing Inktober? Sadly, no, I am not. Right now I'm in the middle of a book project that um, is, I'm almost, you know, behind deadline on. I really have to get this thing finished, and so I did not have the ability to join in uh, Inktober. Maybe next year. Maybe next year my schedule will uh, allow for it, but I've really enjoyed seeing uh, the work by other people who are doing Inktober, hats off to you. It is quite a challenge, I think. And some of these, I mean, these aren't just little doodles. These people are doing like full-blown illustrations, you know, day after day. It's, it's uh, inspiring. Um, so let me go ahead and finish this off um, in uh, time-lapse, and then um, I can't decide whether I'm... Well, I'll see if I need to add a little bit of colored pencil or not. That would definitely be breaking with the rules of Inktober. We'll, we'll see how I feel about it. Let's go ahead and finish this up. All right, well, I've decided to stay true to the spirit of ink here. I'm not going to do colored pencils, but I am going in with a gray uh, marker to just add a bit more shading. I feel like uh, maybe the, if, the, if the brush is casting a shadow across his shirt, that will add to the sense of realism. Because clearly realism... <laughs> is what I'm after with this illustration. <laughs> the boy and the gigantic brush. Um, so yeah, this is going to help me uh, wrap this up. And the next thing to do is, uh, I think, finish off this little bit down here with a bit of uh, brush inking. So give me just a second and I'll be back to do that. Okay, so I've come back with the bottle of ink and my brush, and I just want to do uh, last little bits here that will uh, finish this off, make it look like the ink. Uh, from this bottle has actually been put onto this brush. And those of you who have seen some of my uh, chibi pop-up videos before will maybe know what's coming next. I want to cut this character out from the page and uh, make him stand upright. And uh, what I might do is actually get a second piece of paper so as to kind of close in the whiteness behind him and uh, create the illusion that he is indeed uh, making this brush stroke on the page. But let's go ahead and grab a pair of scissors. And uh, I'm going to somewhat unusually just come over here and start cutting straight across this line. I still have to tell people the... Uh, height of this character, don't I? Krilly, you promised. Tell them how large this is. You could make this at any size, really. People do like to know, for whatever reason, the exact size that I'm working at, maybe hoping to get the same results that I do. And, uh, yeah, there is probably nothing quite as boring as watching me cut this out in real time. So let's go ahead and finish this off in timeline.
All right, so I finished uh, cutting the character out. Used an X-Acto blade for these areas here. A uh, uh, hobby knife, definitely helpful uh, for doing that. And as for the measurement of the character, from the top of the head down to the feet, about four uh, inches, that works out to around ten uh, centimeters. And it is almost time to make this character pop up, but I thought he wouldn't be done unless he had little chibi blushies. So let's go ahead and add those. And now we're ready to change locations so as to turn this into a pop-up chibi craft project. All right, well, we've got our chibi character down here. I've added a second sheet of paper to kind of help complete this illusion. And now it's time for the moment of truth. We are going to fold this guy up and uh, try to get the crease going there. Get a 90 degree angle and voila! Hopefully we get the look that I was going for. Of course it wouldn't be complete without a little thing of ink for him to be working with. And there we go, my little chibi character uh, craft project in honor of Inktober. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thanks so much uh, for those of you who follow along with it and create your own versions. I will be looking out for them on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. You'll see the the links to those at the very end of the video if you want to show me your version of this project. But for now, let's go ahead and wind this one down. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.